Hi guys, it's Mari and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is now 2022, so happy new year guys. I thought the best way to open the new year on this channel would be to do an updated transformation story. It's been about three years since I filmed my last transformation story and a lot has changed. My story has obviously continued and I have a lot to update you guys on. Um, and also I have a ton of new people on my platform who may not know my original story or how I got to be where I am now. So I wanted to fill you guys in. Um, maybe this could be a great reference for those of you who are starting at the beginning. I know what that feels like. I started my journey with no idea what my future would look like. I was 250 pounds, super unhealthy, struggling with mental health. And I know personally, I really looked up to people who had been through it themselves. So I hope this can help you guys and um, make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet. My goal for 2022 is to post a YouTube video every single week so you don't wanna miss one. And um, yeah, let's get into it. So let's hop right into this story. Um, I was just talking to my videographer, Jason, about how difficult it can be to talk about this. I think that's why I've kind of procrastinated this video for three years now because it's difficult to go back and kind of look at yourself at a time where you weren't so proud of who you were. Um, you know, I've been doing a lot of therapy recently and that's definitely helped me get more comfortable with talking about my past, but bear with me as I run through this because it's not my favorite thing to talk about, but I feel like it's important that I do. So I'll start when I was in college. I went to college um, feeling like I wanted to have a brand new life. I had a little bit of a difficult childhood, I would say. Um, I don't love to discuss my whole like family situation because I think it's a little bit too personal. But when I went to college, I was definitely dealing with some mental health issues, not really knowing who I was or what I wanted in life. So. When I got to college, I discovered partying, drinking, and don't get me wrong, I had the time of my life. Like my freshman year was so much fun. I was on academic and social probation at one point because I was having too much fun. Um, so definitely going out too much, but you know, it was like lighthearted fun. And then as I was getting through college and, you know, getting in more relationships, dating, kind of finding out who I was, I was really discovering like my mental health issues were a lot deeper than I had realized. I think I always thought that I was just a more sensitive individual and like, things just hit me harder. Like everything I felt was significantly worse than everyone else. Um, and I also felt like I had a lot of insecurity for no reason. I was just experiencing like a, a huge lack of confidence all the time and I couldn't figure out why you know, a few nights, not a few nights, but I was frequently drinking too much and just getting into a really dark place mentally. Self-harm became a frequent part of my life. So I, I started cutting myself when I lived in my sorority house. I didn't know how to deal with all the pain I had and I ended up self-harming. Um, and at that point, Greg, who I started seeing at the time, said, you really need to get help. Um, you know, I can see that you're you're in a really bad place. So I ended up seeing a psychiatrist in Philadelphia who almost immediately put me on a cocktail of medication. Now, before I hop into like the whole medication conversation, I'm obviously not a doctor. I'm not qualified to tell you guys what you should or shouldn't do with medication. This is just my personal story but I was almost immediately put on anti-anxiety, anti-depression and anti-psychotics. And that is like, it was hardcore. Um, I felt like it completely took away my personality. I had no grip on reality at all. And where I was at in my life, no one taught me about nutrition or alcohol or the effects like sugar can have on you. So while I'm taking all these intense medications, I'm also drinking and that is not a good mix. So I'm going out, I'm still self-harming, I'm having suicidal thoughts. It was the darkest place I've ever been in my life. 
I lost pretty much all the friends I had at the time and ended up alone. Um, I wasn't treating people well. I was just a complete mess, to be honest. And when I look back at that time, I made so many decisions that I'm so not proud of. And I was, I was going nowhere. Um, I was actually in my last semester of college and about to graduate. And I was failing every single class because I couldn't even get myself to the classes. Uh, my apartment looked like a dumpster. Um, it was so, so bad. Greg and I were, you know, not together at this moment. I, I wasn't in the position where I could be in a relationship because I didn't even know what was going on. Um, so I'm sure I'm missing some details, but that was kind of the gist of what was going on at that time. I had also gained a lot of weight. By this point, I think I was getting up to around 250 pounds and weight wasn't really something I ever struggled with. Like as a child, I was always pretty like naturally thin. So gaining all this weight, I felt uncomfortable. I felt unhealthy. My mental health was deteriorating, but I wasn't really aware of it. I know that sounds crazy, but my grip on reality was so not there that I wasn't even able to acknowledge, like I wouldn't look at myself in the mirror. I was just kind of like floating around. Um, so eventually it got so bad that I had to call my dad who has always been there for me and still is. And I told him, you know, I'm in a really bad place. I need to drop out of school. Um, and obviously that's hard to tell your parent when you're about to graduate. And he came to Philadelphia. He helped me clean up my apartment, which was so embarrassing and, you know, something I think about a lot. And I ended up moving back home with him in New York. Um, and moving back home was really the moment where I was able to kind of have a zoomed out perspective on my life and what I had done with my life as at that point. Um, I did decide to stop taking all the medication. I felt like that was something that was holding me back from getting back into reality and being honest with myself. So I cut all the medication pretty much cold turkey, which is what you're not supposed to do. It's not recommended. So that was really hard. Um, and that was really a pinnacle moment for me to, you know, feel like myself again and start taking baby steps in the direction of where I am now. So I should have mentioned this, but a big part of my journey during college was actually getting diagnosed. So when I did go to the psychiatrist, I was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. Um, for those of you who don't know what borderline personality disorder is, a lot of people don't but I think it's starting to become talked about more. They, they consider it to be a trauma-related disorder, kind of like uh, post-traumatic stress. So almost all patients with BPD have childhood trauma. And I would say that's the case for me as well. Um, you do, I think they say you need to have a predisposition for mental health issues, but basically BPD, the way that professionals describe it is it's like having third degree burns, but on your emotions. So things can trigger you a lot more easily. Um, your mood is very unstable. You struggle with relationships. You have a lack of identity. So your core identity is kind of missing and you look for ways to fill that, whether it's through other people or you kind of like bounce around. And it's a very painful, empty disorder to have. Self-harm is a huge part of BPD and a lot of people that have BPD end up taking their own lives, which is obviously really uh, scary to read about when you're young and you first get diagnosed. Um, there's also a lot of stigma around BPD. People, even in the, in the therapy community, struggle helping people with BPD because it's such a complex disorder and if you're watching this and you have BPD, because I know I have a lot of followers that struggle with it, there are therapists out there who can help you and you can work through it and you can live with it and, and have a successful and fulfilled life with this disorder. Anyway, um, let's continue. So I had moved back home, stopped my medication and I was just struggling hardcore. And I think my dad could see that. 
And I remember him buying me this book called Food is Medicine. And when he first handed it to me, I was like, what? You think food's gonna fix my problem? Like, you clearly don't understand. That's not what this is. Um, I was angry and I felt misunderstood. Now looking back, I'm so grateful that he introduced me to that because food has changed my life and so has fitness. So I think that was kind of like the initial thing that sparked, you know, got me thinking about it. And then also I had Greg in my life at this point who has been bodybuilding since middle school. Uh, for those of you who don't know Greg, bodybuilding is his passion. Like growing up when he was young, he looked up to Arnold Schwarzenegger. That was like his thing. So I really emulated Greg and I admired him. When we were dating, he would go to the gym like twice a day. He would be cooking all day. And I thought this guy's crazy. Like, why would you ever do this? I had zero interest in fitness. And it's not like Greg would ever like try to convince me to get into it. I think anyone that is into fitness knows you can't convince people to love fitness. You really have to find it on your own. And I think he was kind of waiting for me to find it on my own. And if you can imagine, I'm at home, I have no goals. Um, I'm dealing with BPD. I, I get triggered so badly to the point where I can barely go out in public by myself. So I'm kind of at this point in my life where I'm like, I really need to have a reality check. Like I need to completely change my life right now and I don't even know where to begin. So I did what I knew I could control, which was my health. At this point, I was eating very badly. The example I like to give was my usual breakfast was two muffins like this big, like pumpkin or blueberry, something super sugary, and an iced coffee with milk and sugar like this big. So that's, that's a lot of sugar in the morning. And sugar is not ideal when you have a mood disorder like me. It makes your energy levels go up and down. You're crashing, you're up, you're down. It kind of like um, adds to the instability you already have. So the first step I took was kind of making tweaks to my diet because I was like, maybe this will help my mood and maybe this will help me make the first step to being healthy. So I pretty much copied Greg's diet exactly uh, to begin with because I didn't know what else to do. So Greg would make like six eggs in the morning and a massive bowl of oatmeal. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, okay, I'm gonna do that. Um, and I remember sending him a picture cause he was still at school when I was at home. And I was like, oh my God, look like I'm being so healthy. And I remember him being like, love, love the effort, love it. Um, I'm a bodybuilder and I'm 215 pounds. You don't have to eat the same amount as me. And I was like, right. So, you know, it, it takes trial and error and I knew nothing about nutrition at this point. So I was really just figuring out what worked for my body, but eggs and oatmeal is a hell of a lot better than two muffins and iced coffee with sugar. So I was already off to a better start. I was definitely intimidated by the gym, but I was starting to follow other fitness influencers. I was watching YouTube, trying to figure out how I could weightlift. I always wanted to weightlift. I was never really into like running or yoga. It was always weightlifting for me. I felt like the women with muscle, one, looked amazing, but two, I was like, that is such a cool way of showing your discipline on the outside of your body. Like any girl that has muscle, they are for sure working hard and they for sure have discipline and that's what I want. I didn't just want to be healthy and fit on the outside. I wanted to be able to go into the world and be str a strong individual. So I wanted to be able to go to the grocery store, go to the gym and not get triggered or over emotional, if that makes sense. I wanted to control my disorder and feel capable of absolutely anything. And to me, that's what weightlifting was gonna do for me. So who better to ask for weightlifting advice than Greg? So Greg would visit me every single weekend and teach me new exercises. So we would go to the gym together. He would teach me how to do squats. I mean, I was learning like male bodybuilding movements, which I kind of credit to my whole journey. Like I still use those movements, like overhead press, squats, whatever it may be. And Greg really like, he was my cheerleader from the beginning. Uh, at this stage, I was so insecure about my body that I actually couldn't look at the weight on the scale. 
So Greg would actually weigh me and tell me, oh, you lost two pounds this week. Oh, you lost five pounds this week. And that's how I knew I was making progress. Now he tells me that he was lying to me occasionally to just, just hype me up a little bit. So thank you, Greg. So, um, yeah, I would wait for the weekend to go to the gym with Greg. And then during the week when I was by myself, this was the time when I was really like pushing myself because I know this may be difficult to understand as someone that doesn't struggle with BPD, but every human interaction I would have, whether it would be like a cashier or someone else at the gym, if I had any type of uh, friction with someone, it would trigger me and make my whole day like it would ruin my whole day. So going to the gym was really scary for me. So at first I would just go, make sure I showed up. And if I was too scared to do the weights, I would just hop on the treadmill. I was also pushing myself to go to the grocery store, which was new for me. So I was doing a lot of like, you know, just pushing myself to even show up at this stage. I was also taking Lulu. I don't know if you guys can see her, but I was taking Lulu on extra walks. So I was just making sure I had more movement throughout the day. That was my goal. And then in between there, I was really just educating myself. Like I was listening to every podcast, buying every book, learning everything I could about fitness. So I'm on this journey for a while and I'm, I'm basically on the come up. Like when I think about this, my journey, I think that this is the moment that I started to feel like myself again, and I'm like finding my confidence. During this time, uh, it was a very independent journey for me. Obviously I had Greg with me, but this was a time when I was like really focused on myself. Um, I had some people in my life who I felt like weren't supporting me and it was kind of bringing a negative energy to this journey I was on. So I, you know, I did cut a few people out of my life and that's something I, I get asked questions about a lot because a lot of people find that when they go through a very transformative period, they have people in their lives who are still holding on to the old version of them. So, you know, I had friends wondering why I didn't want to go out and get drunk anymore or why I wouldn't, you know, go get pizza at 1 a.m. or whatever it may be. And um, that just wasn't making me happy anymore. And I knew what a negative impact alcohol and you know, all these things were having on my life. And eventually I did have to cut people out. And I, I would say, you know, if you're on a journey and you're finding that there are people who aren't supporting you, you don't need to be around them. Um, and that was kind of the motto I had during this nine month period. I was just so focused on this goal. To be honest, it was the first time in my life I'd ever had a concrete goal. I think before that, I was just kind of floating around trying to figure out who I was and for the first time in my life, I'm like, this is my passion. This is what I love. And it was more so about the mental um, transformation I was going under more than anything. The, the physical change was a plus, but I was, you know, figuring out my full potential and what I was capable of. So at this stage, I was feeling good, feeling confident. And I was like, okay, now it's time to focus on my career. So I re-enrolled in school. Um, I was driving to Philly every single week and back to make sure I could finish my classes. I was bringing my little Tupperware of chicken and rice with me and listening to my podcast. I was so dedicated to fitness. I, I didn't even want to spend the night in Philly, even after driving all the way there from New York, because I couldn't stop associating Philly with this like really bad time in my life. So um, I wouldn't even spend the night there. So I'd go right back to New York. I ended up getting my degree and finishing school, which have I used my degree? Not really, but it's okay. <laughs> I got my degree in design and merchandising, which obviously I do use with our companies, but uh, I never ended up really getting a normal job. Anyway, after that, I wanted to get a job, but I didn't even know where to begin. So I went with something within the fitness industry because I felt like that was what I was so passionate about at the time. So I got a job at Orange Theory Fitness. I'm sure you guys have heard of it. I was working at the front desk, making minimum wage, and I was getting there at like three, 4 a.m. every day for the first class um, and opening up. I would bring my Tupperware, I would go out to my car and eat it. And I remember them encouraging me to do the workouts. No offense to Orange Theory Fitness, I was way too into my weightlifting journey to wanna 
get involved with Orange Theory. For me, fitness was such an individual thing. Like when I went to the gym, it was almost like an emotional moment. Like I would get to the gym and play this like intense, sad music and be like, this, like it was so important to me, every single workout. Um, it was all I cared about. And if you can imagine up until that point in my life, I had never pushed my body that hard. So each workout was like, this shit's hard, like it hurt, you know? So I really had to get in my feels every workout. So I didn't wanna do that with a group. And I still kind of feel that way, to be honest. So now I wanna delve into like what happened after I lost the weight. And I'm gonna make this part of the story a little bit more business focused. I get asked a lot about my business story. So that's where this is gonna come into play. So in nine months, I lost about 70 pounds. In total on my whole weight loss journey, I've probably lost closer to 90 to 100 pounds. Um, I'm like 150 pounds now, if you're interested. During this journey, while I was following other influencers and using the internet as a resource, I was not posting at all, really. As I told you guys, this was very much an independent journey and I wasn't really ready to share it yet, uh, except with Greg. So I had all these transformation photos that I was sending to Greg and I was really proud of, but I had never posted one online. I had a very like normal Instagram page, 900 followers, all of them were my friends from Drexel. And I don't think anyone, no one really knew how uh, bad I had gotten in terms of my mental health and how um, dark my life had gotten. So I think this whole journey was like, I'm gonna do this on my own. And I didn't even think about telling people, to be honest. It was at this stage that Greg was like, I really think that you should share your transformation photo. You've lost 90 pounds, you look insane. Like, let's, let's do it. And I was like, oh my God, I was so nervous. Like, what are people gonna think? Which is so funny to think about now because I post to like millions of people, I don't even think about it. But I ended up posting my first ever transformation photo in November, 2017 and it blew up. In my eyes, it blew up. Like it was the first time that I'd had so much feedback online. I had comments, DMs, it was getting reposted everywhere. I was getting all these followers. I remember me and Greg just sitting on the phone, like watching the numbers go up and being like, oh my God, this is crazy. People actually wanna know what I did. Um, it was all women and I felt this like rush of purpose. I think that was the first time in my life where I was like, wait, I wanna help these women, like this is so cool. I can show them how to feel happiness again. Um, I think that was the whole like reason for my journey. Like the whole reason like this happened to me was to be able to tell my story and help other women because I think this happens to so many people. You hit a point in your life where you're depressed and you don't know what to do. Fitness has taught me everything I know about discipline, hard work. I apply it to my businesses. I apply it to my life now. Like fitness taught me so much and I wanted to share that knowledge with others. So it was at this stage that we had so much interest in my workout plan that we were like, okay, let's put together a workout guide. So we made our first ever workout guide, me and Greg. We sold it for $5 and we manually sent it to our people. So if someone showed interest in my workout plan, they would PayPal us $5 and we would email them the plan, which is so crazy to think about now, but we would spend all day on our phones making this happen. And uh, in between that, doing our workouts and you know, that was the start of our business. I should also say that Greg is incredibly entrepreneurial and business-minded and if it were just me, I probably would have kept just posting and sharing things. But Greg was like, this is a business opportunity. And, you know, I love talking to the camera. I love making content. Greg is super business oriented. It was kind of like a match made in heaven. So we kept selling workout plans, $5 each, and basically just raising capital. Um, we kept making new guides, nutrition plans, workout guides, etc., And we were just raising money and saving that money because we knew we wanted to create something else. So the next product we created was our resistance band. Most of you, I mean, a lot of you are OGs and probably remember our first ever resistance band was a snow leopard band with a logo on it that I actually drew myself. And it was a fabric resistance band, which at the time no one else was making. Um, everyone was using these elastic, like rubber resistance band that would roll up and it was uncomfortable. So we were like, okay, let's create something that's comfortable and easy to use. 
and we ended up selling out of the band within 24 hours. We had, I think, a thousand bands, um, which now it's like, that was nothing. But at the time it was like, oh my God, we just sold out of a thousand bands. We hand packed and shipped every single band out of my dad's attic, which was where my bedroom was. My dad was gonna kill me. The house was full of boxes and I signed each and every order. And it, that was the first time that we were like, okay, we can really, we can really make this something. Uh, from there, we called a bunch of warehouses because we needed somewhere to store the inventory. All the warehouses ignored us. No one would take us seriously except for one. And from there, we had a warehouse in California that held all the Mari Fitness resistance bands. Uh, we basically kept selling those and building up capital again because we knew we were not done there. I felt like in my fitness journey, there were a lot of things missing that I would have loved. For example, the resistance band, the workout plan. And the other thing I felt like was missing were supplements. Um, I had a really hard time finding supplements that were not intimidating, full of fillers and chemicals. When I went out to look for a pre-workout or a protein, I felt like a lot of the supplements were marketed to male men. Um, in GNC or a vitamin shop or wherever I was going, it was a lot of like red, black, like crazy labels, um, too much caffeine, super jittery. I didn't like the ingredients. so. We always kind of knew that we wanted to create something for women to help them on their fitness journey. That was our goal. Every time we made a product, we were building up capital towards something bigger. So all of 2018, we were sampling and formulating various pre-workouts. We were trying to figure out the perfect flavor, not too much caffeine, making sure it was giving enough energy and motivation without being too much. Um, it was a very long process and it was just me and Greg. So Greg was handling all the ordering, all the inventory numbers. I was handling all the content. So I had a little photo box that had lighting inside of it. And I would take all of our website photos, um, all of our product photos. At the same time, we were doing customer service for everything else. We really just did it us too. Um, we didn't have any type of team. And I feel like that stage in our business was the most educational thing I've ever experienced. We were literally hands-on with everything. Um, we got to understand inventory numbers and how much you need at different times of the year with fitness and customer service and how important that is. Uh, running an Instagram account, marketing, we were doing it all ourselves and I think that's a big reason why we've grown so much because you really need to do it yourself first to understand how to grow. So we were sampling pre-workouts all of 2018 and we were ready to launch in January, 2019. We had three pre-workout flavors. It was just me and Greg. I remember when we announced it and it did so well. It was incredible, the support we had. I feel like a lot of the women who were buying the PDF guides from me, we had such a tight knit supportive community online that they were all ready and needing a product like Bloom. So when we launched Bloom, it, it took off right away. So from there, we then created protein, greens, which are now our bestseller, collagen. Um, it was pretty insane. And at that point, I was designing all of our labels myself. And so looking back, like I do cringe a little bit, like the labels were not what I would like now. But if I could give any piece of advice, if you're looking to start a business is start before you're ready. I think so many people have it in their heads, like, I'll wait till it's perfect. I'll wait till it's the perfect time. There will never be a perfect time. You will never be ready, just do it. And I think that's something that me and Greg have always been pretty good at. We're pretty, both of us are pretty big risk takers. We can be a little bit impulsive sometimes, but it has kind of lended itself when it comes to our businesses because we're always, we're always ready to just go. That would be my number one business tip. So um, for the first couple of years, it was just Greg and I still, grinding away at Bloom. And then eventually we started hiring and now we have over 20 people across the US working on Bloom alone. Mari Fitness, the PDF guides has now become the Slay app. As many of you know, we have an entire app now. The communities of Bloom and Slay have grown exponentially. It's pretty insane. Uh, it's amazing to see how much. I feel like the companies used to be 
just us and we kind of had this tight knit community and now I'm watching it grow so much bigger. And it's incredible to see how much impact Slay and Bloom have had on so many fitness journeys and just like happiness journeys, I guess. Like no matter what you guys do for fitness, it's incredible to see how much you've grown. And not just that, but it's also been awesome to see our team members and employees like find bloom into their best selves, I guess. Like we have given people such awesome career opportunities and we're watching that in front of our eyes. Um, it's pretty incredible to have such a young company. Like almost everyone that we've hired is under the age of 30. And it's amazing to see them grow within these companies and, and turn bloom into such like a better company. Because if you can imagine when me and Greg first started Bloom, like yes, Greg has great entrepreneurial skills and I'm good at content, but there were so many things that we weren't good at. And that's when hiring comes in. You need to find people who are better than you at what you're trying to do. So we've hired such amazing, talented people and we're so grateful for them. Um, Bloom and Slay are both still 100% self-owned by Greg and I and self-funded. We never took a loan. We never went to the bank. We don't have investors. And that has also been a really big advantage because we're able to pivot and move quickly without getting approval from investors or asking for more money. We've always just done it ourselves and it, it allows us to move with the trends, which has been such an important thing for us. It's such a uh, social media focused business. Um, so, you know, whether it's having to adapt to TikTok or move, you know, start a podcast or move over to YouTube. Um, we're always ready to move quickly. And I think that's helped us massively. Overall, I feel like I started brands that I would have liked to have had during my fitness journey. I would have loved to have found brands that were female owned and by someone who had been through it before, not owned by no shade to men, but like men in business suits in God knows where who know nothing about females in fitness. So that was really my goal from the beginning. Uh, I cannot believe how far I've come or how far these companies have come. It's like really surreal. And I think it just shows you can do anything. Um, I wish you guys could see, you know, where I was at at the beginning of this because I was really like not someone that you would ever aspire to be. I was lost. Um, I was struggling in a really bad way. And I thought my life was going nowhere, to be honest. Um, I thought I would end up as one of the, you know, BPD statistics. I thought that, you know, I was destined to take my own life, to be honest, because that's where a lot of people end up when they have BPD and it was so painful. And now I'm here and I'm doing well. And my mental health is so much better than it's ever been. It's still a process. I still have hard days, but um, if I could tell you guys anything, it's that it does get better and it's worth pushing through um, because you never know where you could end up. Thank you guys so much for listening to my story. If you have any further questions, please comment below. Um, I would love to hear more about your guys' stories. That really is so fulfilling to me. We recently had a meet and greet, which you guys would have seen. And that was like truly the most incredible thing to hear your guys' stories and hear how we've impacted you. So thank you so much to those of you who came. Um, the Slay Challenge starts on January 10th, which is possibly the day you're watching this. So you can still join if you'd like to. It's an eight week challenge. We're giving away weekly prizes. I feel like this is the perfect way to start 2022. So make sure you go download the Slay app if you wanna join. And Bloom is also having a The Year of You campaign right now where you will find discounted bundles on the website with all new goodies that will help you during your fitness journey. So make sure you check those out. And if you didn't yet, make sure you subscribe. I'm doing weekly videos all about fitness, healthy recipes, workout routines. So I cannot wait to see you guys for the next video. Thank you. Bye.